so welcome back students to one more session of your structure of benzene so first we have studied the key cool structure we have seen the objections of key cool structure then i've taught you the different structures given by uh no divar given by claus given by armstrong ladenberg right isn't it i've also given you what is still uh, thilly's theory then i've taught you how did levin and call or could they prove that key cool structure is acceptable structure so what did they do they perform ozonolysis experiments isn't it on xylene they done ozonolysis experiments on ortho xylene so both have given two two products right in the ratio of what 3 is to 2 is to 1 so today in this video i'm going to teach you the modern view of structure of benzene right so when i have to take the modern view of structure of benzene <coughs> this was given under study under 2 what is that on the resonance concept and then a cyclic delocalization this is an orbital diagram right so when i have to speak about the modern views on structure of benzene right so let us write resonance right so when the concept of resonance was applied right to the structure of benzene because so key cool has already given the molecule benzene molecule structure isn't it right uh, the concept or the main word or the concept of stability of the compound was explained so this concept of resonance is means it explains what does it give us it could explain what gives us the stability of benzene This is the main thing. So, what did uh, we uh, Levin and Corey also say? Key uh, cool structure was found to have been resonating structure between two. What are they? They said this is your benzene C six H six. So, one leave it, one more leave it, one more. This is this is having. A resonance structure. It always has a resonance structure. Here, suppose if I number this one, two, three, four, five, and six. The pi bond is between two and three. Now number this also one, two, three, four, five, and six. So here it was between one, two, and three. Now let it be between one and two. Leave this bond three and four. Leave this bond five and six. So key cool structure was found to be resonating structures of benzene. What do they do? They differ in the position of pi bonds. So the actual structure we are going to do draw the resonance hybrid also. So cyclohexene has only one pi bond, isn't it? So how much energy does it, re it releases? Twenty eight point six kilocalories per mole during hydrogenation. So benzene has how many pi bonds? Three pi bonds. So during hydrogenation, how much does it release? You means hydrogenation means you are adding hydrogen to this. You are breaking these pi bonds and you are adding hydrogen. So during hydrogenation to benzene, as I've shown you in the first video, because of uh, uh, pi bonds, three pi bonds, three into twenty eight point six. So what out? What is this twenty eight point six? Twenty eight point six is a energy released when hydrogen was added to cyclohexene. So three into twenty eight point six kilojoules per mole. It is comes to twenty six. Okay, this is eighty five point eight kilocalories per mole. So much energy was released when 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 hydrogens were added. How many hydrogens? Six hydrogens were added to benzene. Yes, but it was uh, means according to the value, it has to release as much. But how much was it found to be? It was found to release forty nine point eight kilocalories only. There was a gap of almost how much, but found during hydrogenation. This according to cyclohexene, cyclohexene for this to undergo hydrogenation, how much did I say? Hydrogenation, it it took eight twenty eight point six kilocalorie per mole. So, but the same thing I'm applying to benzene. So three pi bar, three twenty eight point six comes to this. But when I take the actual value of this. This is actual value. Um, I should say this is an experimental value. Okay, what the value of this? Let us not write actual and get confused. Value of observed was forty nine point eight kilo calorie per mole. So how much was the gap? There was a gap of thirty six kilo calories. Thirty six kilo calories per mole. 
so be between the theoretical value and actual value so the theoretical value and the actual value so this i raised out so this is a theoretical value and an actual value the observed value difference is 36 kilocalories per mole so this energy is called resonance energy resonance energy done so one mole of benzene how much does it possess it process 36 kilocalories energy less than it should contain isn't it so the energy whatever how much ever benzene has spent by one mole of benzene molecule you know uh, that exhibits that whole concept uh, explains the resonance energy in benzene so we will be seeing a graph on resonance energy also we'll be understanding that so that gap <coughs> which I said is a resonance energy we will further see in the next video right now after this resonance energy or concept of resonance we will be studying what is cyclic delocalization cyclic delocalization now in benzene when I have to draw the structure there are six carbon atoms in benzene is it it so six carbon atoms six carbon atoms and these six are carbon atoms what is the hybridization because there is a double bond the sp2 hybridized sp2 hybrid orbitals correct now each carbon atom has how many has three sp2 hybridized orbitals correct and what do they do they're going to form three sigma bonds according to the structure so let us draw the structure and see cyclic structure we said in benzene ring we are studying the orbital diagram this is the hydrogen 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 we said all hydrogens are at the corners isn't it hydrogen so these carbons whatever are there here all are sp2 hybridized and what does the carbon do it's going to form each uh, listen each carbon the sp2 sp2 hybrid orbitals they form sigma three sigma bonds isn't it they form sigma bonds two with neighboring carbons and one with hydrogen this carbon once again this carbon undergoes sp2 hybridization with this hybrid orbitals with this one there's one carbon here this will undergo sp2 hybridization with this one and this one and one this one with one ball with hydrogen how does this look this looks like this correct Yeah. So each carbon atom, whatever is there, has a p orbital extending above and below. After forming sp2 hybridized here, the leftover one it forms above and below. Means that uh, p orbital which is left out, that it forms or it is aligned in right angle triangles in this way. So this particular orbital diagram, let's see. How does it what does it do now it's going to form a pi bonds according to kegel structure these p orbitals overlap laterally you know in two different forms according to kegel now basically we said this carbon is sp2 hybridized right then we said the carbon has how many sp2 hybridized three it means each carbon has three sp2 hybrid orbitals each carbon each carbon has three sp2 hybrid orbitals correct that is what we have seen after that each carbon atom whatever is there it's going to form of each carbon has or it forms three sigma bonds with neighboring atoms this carbon atom forms sigma bonds with this carbon forms sigma bond with this one and also forms sigma bond with hydrogen so what does it do it forms a sigma bond done now after that 
each carbon atom has a p orbital which is extending above and below isn't it so first point will be this then you will write three sigma bonds in that two with neighboring carbons and one with hydrogen atom two and one hydrogen atom that so all the six carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms are connected in the same plane correct let us write that all carbon and hydrogen are connected in same plane done yes now according to key cool structure we're going to take the same page according to key cool structure how does it uh, look like this one all the plan structure is not so neat i'm just trying it is rough diagram this is the one which is above and below here also in that above and below pi bond the p orbital one now according to kiku structure there are two different ways of forming kiku structure one is the pi bond exist when this one first one Yes, sir. And this. So this is one way of forming pi bond. Next one, pi bond can form between these two p orbitals. Pi bond can form between these two p. Pi bond can form between these two p. See this. There's a difference. This is forming a bond here. This there is no bond. These two are forming a bond here. This there is no bond. These two are forming a bond here. This. These two are not forming a bond here. So there's a shift of. pi bond according to the uh, listen with the key cool structure we have shown that concept right now <coughs> these structures have localized pi molecular orbitals correct so instead of two neighboring p orbitals now if the p orbitals of all the six carbon atoms they overlap laterally means one above and one below how does that look right this is according to the key cool structure now if p orbitals let's make one more diagram if p orbitals of all six carbon atoms six carbon atoms overlap laterally suppose if they overlap laterally how do they overlap laterally above and below if they overlap like this how does this look the whole uh, diagram it looks like a donut maybe i okay let me try right so this whole thing connecting on the top top one over oh. now connect the bases one right how is it looking this is looking basically like an electron cloud above and electron cloud below if it is like this electron cloud is above and electron cloud is below so above and below <coughs> it's looking in the form of a donut isn't it donut we have uh, that shape form of donut so they are going to form a ring above and below so this is called cyclic <coughs> delocalization cyclic delocalization this concept so this cyclic the as more nuclear attract pi electrons the species becomes more and more stable so 
So now the pi electrons are a lot of space, isn't it, to move? They are delocalizing, the cyclic delocalization. So what happens? The molecule, whatever is there, it's going to spend more energy for the moment and possesses less energy, right? It will use it. It will use it only for localization only. So on the whole, when I see the energy of the system, the energy of the system is less because of this cyclic thing. Once again, I'm repeating. Now there's a lot of space for the pi electron to move. So when the pi electrons are moving, what will happen? The molecule, benzene molecule, whatever is there, it spends more energy. Let us write first. More space for pi electrons to move. So when there is a lot of space for electrons to move, what will happen to the system, whole system? The molecule spends more energy. For where, where does this use more energy? Where does this spend? It's going to spend this energy in movement of the molecule, means movement of the pi bonds only. Right? So what does this molecule do? This molecule spends more energy for means movement of movement for movement and and has on the whole if I see and has less energy than it should okay because it is using of the energy <coughs> in movement less energy hence what will happen? Hence, stable. This is where it ends. Because it is using in the moment of the pi bonds, delocalization, the whole the energy of the whole system is stable. Whichever has less energy, that means it is more stable, isn't it? So, this is how your orbital diagram was explained. Hope the concept is clear, students. So, so whenever you are writing the orbital diagram, you have to remember carefully you will we'll be explaining the sp2 hybridization structure three sigma bonds then we explain about how they are connected in the same plane then this also i have shown you cyclic delocalization this forms a donut and after that you should show the positions of the key group structure and finally explain it as stable right so thank you for watching students i'll meet you again with the next one that is huckel's rule